Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mr. Hydra and this is Rust Console Edition. Are you ready for what I have in store for you today? Well, if so, then like, subscribe, and follow me. Okay, and welcome to Mr. Rusty Hydra's Masterclass on Electricity. Um, what I'm hoping to do is make one big long video that takes all of the explanations and a bunch of the other systems uh, and stuff that I use and put it all into one uh, digestible video. Uh, something that will hopefully answer any and all questions, um, help people understand why I have things set up the way that I do, um, and I'm also going to uh, include, you know, um, all of the math and everything else involved with power so you guys get a complete and full understanding of uh, exactly what it is that you're uh, doing when it comes to setting up power. So I have set up a few things here. Um, this is just a part of what I'll be showing you. Um, but uh, to start, I figured I would show you the power in and power out. Uh, that kind of stuff and get all of that fully explained for you um, because that's well the most important thing how you collect and use your power um, I'm going to be showing you the optimal setups that I believe to be are the best setups um, and again uh, I'm going to be going over why I think that they're the best setups by going few, through uh, a few different ones for you here um, and then we're going to move on to some more um, advanced wiring as well. So if you're new to wiring, you've never done it before, uh, this guide will help you out. Um, and if you need a more in-depth guide on how some of these systems work, um, I do have uh, those set up for you um, in my playlist. You just got to go check those out. So without further ado, um, let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to set up here is going to be our medium battery. Um, and we're going to set this one up in a couple of different ways, just so you can see different ways of getting power hooked up. Um, but then we're going to move on to the large battery and um, what I believe to be the best setups that you're going to want. Now, when it comes to charging uh, your batteries here, um, what you're going to notice if we go over to this large battery here when you look at its uh, info the very last um, line is the most important line so charging rate is dependent on power in with a maximum of 80 percent efficiency that means for that means you only ever get 80 percent of the power that you put in here so if you put in 50 power to match the 50 power that's being used um, Really, you're not going to get 50 power, you're actually only get, going to receive 40 power into this. So we need to figure out how much power we need to put into the system. Um, and there's a way of calculating that. So now there's two different ways you can run your system. You can either run it completely off of solar or as you can see over there, you can add solar and wind uh, combinations together. Um, both of those require two different um, ways of calculating the power but for now we're going to start on solar only so we're going to come to our battery here and we're going to see that we have a maximum output of 50 so that means we can put out 50 rust watts um, a minute and in a rust watt day there are 40 minutes in a rust watt day. So we're going to do 50 output times the 40 minutes in a day. That means we have 2000 rust watt minutes that we use in a day, uh, in a 40 minute period. Now, um, in order to figure out um, the remaining 20% that we have to put back into the battery because again if we're using 2000 in a day we need to replace that 2000 plus the 20% so to figure that out we're going to take our 2000 we're going to multiply that by 100 and then we're going to divide that by 80 
that leaves us 2500 power. So we need to produce 2500 power um, in a 40 minute rust watt day in order to satisfy this battery. Now in that 40 minute day um, we can pretty much consider 12 of that 40 minutes to be nighttime. That means we have 28 minutes remaining in our daytime. So we have 28 minutes of solar power collection going into the battery. So we need to um, divide our 2500 power by our 28 minutes that we have, totaling 90 power. So we need to be producing 90 power into this um, in order to use not only what we're using at the time, but also to cover what we're using at night and to cover the 20% loss. So we need a minimum of 90 power. Now to get that 90 power, we're going to need five solar panels. Uh, and that actually brings us up to 100 power. So as you can see here, we're almost at 100 power. It is still early in the day. Um, but we do need 100 power um, going into the battery. So um, how most people would do it is they hook up their solar panels to the root combiners. Um, you can do this in any way you want, so long as all of the root combiners are combined. Um, and then you have the remaining power coming out of here. All right, so all of our combined power from our solar is being pumped out here. Um, now, I only have the display panel for you guys to see how much power you're producing. You don't have to put this into your base, but you can um, if you're ever worried about it. But we're going to show you how most people would wire their base. So they would go, uh, they would come in and they would go from their main power source uh, to their battery and then from their battery they would go to a switch and then they would go to a couple of their systems so again this is called an electrical tree and you're going to want to use all of you're going to want to use these when you want to connect different systems onto it. So for instance, this could be turrets, this one could be lights, this could be heaters, and this could be cameras, um, automatic doors, whatever you want. But typically, this is how people would set up their system. So we have 100 power going in, and we're going to configure this to be, one, um, to be 100 as well because what we're going to do is we're going to simulate this battery being under a full load. So when we turn the battery on, we can now see that under active usage, we have our full usage of 50. Um, but you can also see that if we look at our charge left, the time is going up because we're producing more power um, because we're producing more than uh, the 90 power that we need. Now this can go below 90 power um, this can actually go as low as um, uh, this can sorry go below 90 power um, however if it does go below 90 power it will still continue to charge um, but you won't have enough battery power to last the night um, so uh, because you're going to be right on the edge so let's say so this needs 50 um, in order to replace the 50, we actually need 62 power. Um, if not accounting for the night, we need 62 uh, power. So if I was to come over here and actually uh, say disconnect these two, we now have 60 power. And now you can see that we're teetering right on the edge of um, our battery power usage. So we're not counting down in seconds it's taking a couple of seconds and it's slightly going up and down that means we're right on the border of where we need to actually uh, what we actually need to be supplying it um, however we do have to account for the night time uh, because again this only works uh, we only collect solar during the day so we need this time to be going up 
which it is here, as you can see. Um, and then that way we are guaranteeing that we're going to have enough power um, over the course of the night. We're actually getting 10 more power than we need put into the battery, even under full use. Now, there's another way that we can um, set up the system um, because there's some drawbacks to this. So because we're getting our 20% loss, um, it's we're having to supply more power than we would actually need if we were to run it a different way. Um, not only that, but we have all of our circuits here on a switch. So if somebody was to break in from, say, this wall, they now have access to all of our uh, all of your switches and all of your systems. And then not only that as well, but if you um, blow up the battery here then all of your systems turn off. Um, and that's no good. So it's okay to start with, um, and if you're gonna just run a medium battery and that's your first system, um, that's totally okay if that's the way you wanna uh, run to start with. But I would highly recommend that you actually add this system uh, into it right here. And I'm gonna show you what this does. So. By taking our, our battery, our straight power from our solar system, uh, we're going to go down and we're going to install it right here into the first branch of our infinite power system. And now what ha what's happening is the power is being split off into two different directions. So again, the main red power line is being split off into um, the OR switch, which is then being sent directly into um, our system. Now the second thing that's uh, happening uh, is the remaining power is then being sent to this electrical branch. Two of that power is being immediately sent to the blocker to prevent any power going through the blocker. And then the remaining power is being kicked out and sent to the battery. Now, let's get the battery hooked up and I'll show you why that's important. So, we're going to continue following the green line here. We're going to go to our power in. And now we're going to take our blue line. Run it to the power out and into the blue blocker. Okay. Now we have to do a little bit of configuring. So we need to, uh, this one stays default too because we only need two power being sent out to here. Uh, we actually only need one, but we can't can, uh, configure this lower than one. So that's why it's gonna stay two. Um, and we need all of the remaining power to be sent out here. Um, so because we can't really calculate how much power is being sent out here directly, uh, that's why we have it set up this way. So now it's being, uh, the remaining power is being sent to the battery, which is charging the battery. And then it's gonna come from the battery through this blocker out into the system. So our OR switch here, what this does is it allows this power or this power to be transferred through here, which then runs the rest of our electrical tree and our electrical systems. Now, why is this important? So by configuring this branch to match the output of this branch, so in this case, our medium battery can only output 50 power. So 50 power will be sent out here. One will be used from uh, by the blocker so we can have 49 power coming out of here so we need to match this left branch to also be 49 so now as you can see we have power going all the way through so our power is coming in from the solar it's being sent directly to our systems that we need to be powering for example our turrets and then the remaining power is being sent out to our medium battery. Um, 
as um, we lose power during the day, so let's disconnect our power here, you're going to notice that this blue blocker is now going to be unblocked and the battery is going to take over. So now we have two green lights, the battery is taken over, and we're still continuing to get our 48 power uh, coming out of the system, but it's not being powered directly. Um, now, the reason why this is good is also for two reasons. So now, during the daytime, oh, sorry, let me uh, change back to the right color here. So now, during the daytime, your um, battery, when set up correctly, if you notice, the battery has zero active usage on it. We're still running our full power system off of it. We're still getting our 48 power, but we have zero active usage on this battery. Um, and we're charging it at the exact same time, which is wicked. Now, so during the day, I can now disconnect this battery. So because it's daytime now, right, I can disconnect that battery like we did last time. Only this time, our units will continue to run. So during the day, this battery can be destroyed and all of your systems will continue to run. It's only at night when this battery is actually active do you actually need um, the battery. So this makes your system um, just that much more robust. So. Just in case they do kill your battery, you have a way of continuing to run your system afterwards. Oh, that should be blue. Change that back to blue. So now your battery basically becomes a backup system. And then not only that, but uh, remember how last time we disconnected these two uh, solar panels right here dropping our power down to 60, we still continue to have enough power to run our system, um, and we're still charging the battery at a rate of 6. Um, now, all I have to do is we'll do some more calculations, because now we don't need to be running as much power um, into the system, because uh, some of that power is already being taken care of. So instead of having to do 2,500 power, or the 2,000 um, plus the 20%, um, this is going to be a little bit different. So now we're using 50 power, um, but we're only using that power at night, which is 12 minutes. So 50 times 12 means, means we need to replace 600 power, then we're going to um, add in our 20%. So we're going to multiply one by 100 and then divide by 80. That means we need 750 power. And from that 750 power, we're going to divide that by the 28 minutes we have during the day, meaning we need 26 power in total um, per minute, or 27, I should say, but 26, 27 um, per minute. Um, going through this line so really we can only we only have to hook up one more solar panel um, we could disconnect one there uh, to bring us to 80 power and that would be enough power to run the whole system so by adding this system on here we're saving 20 power um, we're saving 20 power so we're saving ourselves a solar panel um, and we're also making this battery into a backup system that only runs uh, at night. Um, so that is by far the best way that you could possibly bring your power um, into um, the system. And uh, this is set up for a medium battery system. So I'm gonna put the numbers for you on screen here so you know which values to set our, these uh, branches at. And there you go. Now these branches right here, this is what's called an electrical tree. So it, 
this will run all of the things that you want to run and you start with your most important things you want to run starting to your least important things you want to run now if you're on a medium battery here you can only do so much so typically on a medium battery like this um, you're going to want to run at least three turrets so let's quickly get some of these turrets down just so we can give you an idea of what's going on here with these turrets So now we have our three turrets. Now we want to run our three turrets from this first electrical branch because it's our most important stuff. Um, and because we're running three things that all require the same amount of power, we're going to run it off of this uh, three-way um, splitter here. Now some people will tell you to add a switch before this so then that way you can turn on and off your turrets. Uh, but I'm going to show you a different and better way and more secure way to do that because switches are bad, okay? So we're not going to use switches anymore. We're going to use electrical branches and we're going to uh, configure our electrical branches because we're going to use our brain. So from the left side out here, we're going to connect into our three-way splitter. And then from our three-way splitter, we're going to connect into our turrets. One of the things I like to do with my turrets is I like to pick a spot just underneath the turret on the ground and then up into the turret so you don't have those big, uh, a big um, hanging line. There we go. So now we have our three turrets set up. But these turrets only require so much power in order to run. And we want to be able to continue to run other things off of this medium battery as well. So, oh, perfect example. You can see that we have three turrets running off of it. Right? Everything's going. Yet our battery is still sitting here charging and it's not being used. Alright, so everything is being uh, powered over here. And we're still getting 46 power into uh, our recharge time. So we're doing more than uh, what we need in order to charge for the night. So eventually this battery will end up full. Um, but back to our turrets. So because we have these turrets set up, we want to be able to continue to run different things off of here. Let's say we want to be able to run um, a light. Well, it doesn't take 31 power for us, or it only takes 31 power for us to run all of this stuff, not 47. So we're going to configure this one to be 31, which will then turn the rest of these on because it's going to kick out the rest of our power. So we have 16 remaining power after we are done running our um, splitter, which takes one power, and our three turrets, which takes 10 power each. So now we have these on, but now I know what you're saying, well how do I turn these off in order to um, fill them up with um, bullets or to authorize my friends on them? Well, whether you have a wire tool or not, um, as long as you have authorization onto your TC, you can walk up to the branch that they're connected to and just configure this back to the default. Now you can change it to two if you want but I find the fastest way to do this is to simply just hit zero, which will automatically change it back to the default two. And now, because we've removed the ability for um, the power, um, we've only got two power going into the system, which isn't enough to run anything, we now have the ability to turn them off. So now, Nobody can sit here and flip a switch if they were to break into this wall, flip a switch and turn off your turrets. Right? They again have to have TC access. And then just simply turn them on, you just give them back the power that they need. In this case, it's 31 power. And all of our turrets are set up. And then you can uh, do what you like off the top piece. Uh, so let's say we add a light and we're going to add 
Now, when it comes to lights or non-important systems, stuff like lights, you can hook up a switch, absolutely. It's really only for your important systems. And honestly, I would have your lights on an automatic system anyway. So, but you got your two coming out of there. And then you run it into your lights. So now we're going to need one power to run this and we're going to need two power to run this totaling three power so we're going to configure this to three and then we can turn on our lights and then we can turn off our lights whenever we want so and then again you're just going to continue to make more um, branches off of your electrical tree in order to run more things off of it so in this case, um, coming into here, we have 12 power left to play with. All right, so we could hook up a heater if we wanted to. Hook up a heater. And then configure this to be three as well, because the heater needs three power. And then there we go. And then we can turn on all of our heaters and stuff throughout the base. And if at any time we want to turn this off, all we have to do is change this back down to two. That will turn off. Even if this lights are on, we can figure this to two. That will turn off because there's only one power being supplied into the light, which isn't enough coming from the switch. And then we can configure this back to two. And it'll turn all of the stuff off. So if you need to run a small system um, that's just a medium battery with a couple of turrets, um, a heater, and a switch for some lights, uh, whatever, then this is the best system for you right here. I will leave it here for a second. Let you guys uh, take a look. But this is um, the best medium um, build that you can get. Five solar panels, medium battery, and then this stuff. And it doesn't have to look exactly like this on your wall. Um, you can spread it around. Um, I'm going to show you just a little bit later on exactly how to wire all of this stuff into a base and how to hide it so people don't know that it's even in there to begin with. Um, but yeah, this is probably the simplest and easiest setup that I would recommend for all solos and duos. Um, set this up. Definitely set up this infinite power system here. Definitely set yourself up an electrical tree. And this is going to save yourself so many headaches in the future. Um, and if you continuously set up the same system every single time, um, then it's just going to become second nature for you. So, uh, moving on from the medium battery, we're now going to upgrade um, to a large battery. Um, and the biggest reason people run power is for turrets. Um, it's, the, it's the number one thing people need power for. Everything else is basically extras and just nice to haves. Um, you know, lockdown, some of them uh, are more like the lockdown system are more important than others, but basically, um, you're going to want to run a large battery and, and set up for your nine turrets. So this is uh, the way to do a large battery. Now again, it's just all of the root combiners being combined um, into you know, one big long line and all of them are being put into uh, one space here. So one of the things I like to do is I like to make sure I have enough open spaces uh, in the bottom for my solar panels and then I start connecting everything together. Uh, if you notice over here I started down here and then this is kind of like a daisy chain version and then this is kind of like the this is uh, the pyramid version if you were to actually see it um, in its proper form this would form a pyramid but at the end of the day all of this comes out here. Now for a large battery, which is twice the capacity of the medium and twice the output, you're going to need twice the solar, so you're going to need 10 solar panels. Um, and again, we're getting 200 power here instead of the 100 we have over there. 
Now one thing I should mention here while I'm here is you're going to want to set up your solar panels uh, south, southwest, uh, southeast, and southwest. Um, because the sun travels across the sky along the south, uh, southern hemisphere, um, it does not move throughout the white. So if you have any solar panels facing north, you're going to receive very little, if any, power from it at all. So to uh, maximize your power, um, for every three solar panels you have facing uh, south, you want to have one southeast and one southwest. One to grab that little bit of extra morning sun, uh, and one uh, to grab that little bit of extra um, afternoon sun uh, in the evening. So three to two ratio over there, uh, because again, you need five uh, and then 10. So three to two ratio as you set that up. Uh, so that's what we have right here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten solar panels all being connected into one, uh, giving us currently 197 power. Um, and then that's being hooked into the same infinite power system that we had hooked up in the last one. Only this one needs to be configured a little bit different. So because the, this battery is capable of putting out 100 power, and then we lose one pa power as it goes through this, this means we need to configure this branch to be 99, because we're only going to be able to get 99 power into our system, which leaves us 98 power to play with. Now again, we could take this and we could hook this up into our uh, electrical tree here and then we can run all of our systems off of this. Um, so you, this for say, ex for example, this system you can run six turrets for your 60 power um, and then it gives you a bunch of extra power for say uh, your cameras or whatever, your heaters, whatever you want to run. Um, but honestly, I wouldn't use um, a large battery by itself on this system um, for, for running um, anything off of an electrical branch. In fact, I would only use uh, this particular setup here um, for your turrets. And I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you that right now. Boom, so as you can see, I just turned on all of my turrets, right? Um, everything is going nice and well. Now, these, again, are acting like my switches. So if I want to turn off a specific set of these, I just switch this to zero, and it loses power to those three turrets. So now I can go and do whatever I need to on those turrets. I come back here. I reconfigure this back to 31 and my turrets turn on and I can do the same thing on this one and I can do the same thing on this one and if you really wanted to you could hook it up to a uh, an electrical branch let's just uh, get this off here I'll set this to 100 Then if you really wanted to, you could also have a master switch, right? So everything is on right now. Uh, place this back down to zero. And all of our turrets turn off. I'm gonna come back here, change it to 200. And all of our turrets turn back on. So that's one way of having a master switch, which means you can get rid of these switches in here. Um, but if you want, if you're someone that wants that extra control, and because we do have enough power to support it, you can have these extra switches. And all of these are just combined to the left side. All right, so uh, we're putting all 31 power out the left, so the right side is getting no power. But then when we put this back down to zero or the default two, it's sending out two power, which isn't enough to power anything. So now those turrets turn off. And we can go back here and we can turn this back on to 31. And all of our turrets tur turn back on. Um, again, I would only use these if you want extra control. If you don't care about having that extra control, then just run these wires straight into the splitter um, and just use this one main branch in order to uh, run all of your turrets. 
Now, let's just say uh, we got rid of the uh, six over here because you want to just run this off of, uh, you want to be able to run just the one battery. Well, now we set this over here. So we have uh, six turrets, that's 60. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. So we need to run 65 power through here. Uh, making sure we disconnect from here because it's going to evenly distribute the power out of all of these so because there's only two of these branches now it's going to evenly split the power between these two so they're each receiving 32 which is 31 30 and then we have our turrets and that that's going to leave us with an extra 32 power to play with wouldn't you know it so now we have 32 power that we can hook up our lights, automatic doors, uh, whatever we want. Um, or we can simply change this back. <coughs> change this back to uh, our 200, 100, 2000, doesn't matter as long as it's above. Um, if this is just for turrets, it doesn't matter. Keep this on 31. And then we just have to make sure that we uh, Let's get back into the system. So that's a few different ways that you can run different uh, systems here off of a large battery. Um, and when it comes to the large battery, we have to be producing less than 105 power um, for these turrets to turn off. So as long as we're producing more than 105 power, um, then all of these turrets will stay on. Um, so just like that other system there, everything is during the day will always be on. Um, and it's only at nighttime will we actually start using this battery. So uh, once we dip below the 105 mark there. So um, if, you're, if you're just going to run a single battery um, and it's just for turrets, then uh, this is the um, system for you that you want to hook up. So I'll leave this here. I'm going to leave the values up here on screen for you for just a second. And there you go. Moving on to what I believe to be the best system for your base. Um, well, almost the best, but the most reasonable anyway. Um, would be five solar panels, four of them facing south, one facing east or west. It doesn't matter which way you want to put it, but that's uh, what you want. And then one wind turbine. Now, solar panels is what I always recommend that you use if you're going to do any small base design, um, whether when you're only using one battery. But as soon as you start getting into multiple batteries, I would definitely hook up a wind turbine. And there's a way that you can use this combination to actually put yourself down uh, two batteries onto one small system like this. So the reason I like solar panels the most is because the solar panels are only active uh, for certain times of the day. You know exactly how long that's going to be, which is roughly 28 minutes. Um, and you know how much power they're bringing in. So it's very easy to calculate how much power um, a solar um, panel will generate versus a wind turbine because although the wind turbines are capable of producing up to 150 power um, sometimes they also only produce a zero power and it also determines by how high up you are if there are other things around it um, there's lots of variables when it comes to um, wind turbines and as you can see right now we're producing 120 power which is great so really we would we want this thing to be consistently outputting over 105 power because as long as it's producing over 105 power um, then our entire system is on and running because um, if it's always on and running then we have to charge the batteries even less and I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about what that means later but um, so basically I consider these to be about 100 power each um, 
Sometimes they produce less, sometimes they produce more, um, but more than 50% of the time they're producing um, over our uh, 100 that we need. So let's go down and look at the system real quick. And this is one I recommend for all um, for all um, group bases um, that has four or more people in it, um, because they're gonna your base is already gonna be the size uh, raid target enough anyway. So you're gonna want to have wind turbines um, up on your base. So uh, this is the system right here. And currently, right now, we're producing 224 power, which is being um, put into this first infinite power system that's running all of our turrets. Um, and it's also being run off into the second battery. So just like the first system, we have this set up here, and we have this configured to 99, because that's all the power that we're able to produce. Uh, it's then being hooked, pushed up here into this electrical branch, which is acting like our switch. Um, and then it's being put into our three-way splitter, which gets split into three other three-way splitters that get split and spread around your base in order to um, power your turrets, because at this point your base is going to be uh, quite tall. So you're going to want to spread out your other three uh, splitters, making sure that they're well hidden. But you're going to want to make sure that they're spread out, so that that way you have no problems running the lines from your turrets into your splitters. Um, but they run off of the same configuration, just like this. All right, so that's the one that we have up in there. Um, that one is this one right here. Now, uh, so we're going to send 120 power. Um, the other one, by the way, if you're running off of just solar and you're going into um, that battery over there, it needs 167. Um, but we could actually drop that down to, again, cover what we're using during the day and um, at night, blah, blah, blah. Um, if we're just running straight power. If we're running off of our system right here, um, we can actually set that to be even lower. Um, but because we don't have any other batteries running off of it, we don't have to worry about setting that branch. So we're always just getting our uh, extra power anyway. 71, which is more than enough power uh, that we need or 69 in this case, um, going into that, which is more than what we need. So, with this system, um, again, as long as that windmill up there is producing more than 100 power at night, um, then it's going to continue to run all of your turrets at night off of straight power. So neither of these batteries will be in use. Um, and the batteries become specifically for um, a backup. Um, for your, your turret battery here. This one specifically comes uh, a backup battery, but it's going to slowly, slowly charge over time um, because we have very little power going into it, but this battery is being used very, very little. About 95% of the time you're playing, this battery will not be used, so it becomes a backup. So even if they do come in and they destroy this battery, all of your turrets will continue to run so long as you have your power system going up on the roof as well. Um, and vice versa, if they destroy your power system up on the roof, well then your battery will take over and it'll continue to run all of the turrets. So we're configuring this first branch to be 120. So that 100 is being uh, kicked off into there. Uh, and then we're charging the battery right now at a rate of 17. Um, which is more than enough because again, that battery is never being actually uh, being used. And then all of the remaining power, which in this case happens to be uh, 100 right now, because we're during the day, um, that remaining power is then being kicked off into the second battery, and then from the second battery into our electrical tree. <coughs> um, it's the exact st same setup as all of the other ones before, um, and now we can run all of our secondary systems off of that, so automatic doors, heaters, cameras, um, that kind of... Uh, that kind of fun stuff. So, um, all of this is being supplied power. And uh, as you can see, we have the active usage of 100, um, and, but we're not quite charging it at uh, the rate that we need, which is why this is on the secondary system. Um, and then you can figure these. So, as you can see, all of these are on right now. So, when you want them off, you just configure this be full value which shuts down all of your second systems 
uh, so you can turn them all off. Um, or um, consequently, you can also run it the uh, through the right side here, like this. And then you set your uh, branch to be 200, <coughs> and that's going to allow all of the power to come through. And then when you set this to zero, it's going to shut down all of your stuff. Um, so it's actually better if you're going to use a branch as your switch um, to always leave your first branch um, to connect to the left side and then make your tree off of that first branch. Because now, if we go over to the battery, we're only using two, um, and we're actually charging the battery. <coughs> so that's um, that's just the way to do it. And then um, we just set this and configure this to be whatever power uh, it is that we're using it. So if we're only using 50 power, we'll set this to be 50 power. All of this stuff has uh, power going to it. Um, and we're still slowly charging because we're putting in more power than we're using. So um, this system is really only as a backup system. It's only for your secondary systems um, and it's only going to be on and active when you're actually on. Uh, when you log off at the end of the night, <coughs> simply change this to zero um, and then your battery will just sit there and charge all night. So. Uh, and then when you come back the next day, this will have more than enough power to run everything that you could possibly need or think or want. Um, so in my opinion, this is by far the best power system um, that you can set up in your base. Right here. i leave this just like this. I'm going to put down the power values for you. And that's the best power system that you want for your base. So, if you're looking to, um, if you're looking to just hook up turrets, then this is the system uh, that you're looking for, right here. Um, minus this stuff. Connecting from the left side into your turret. Alright, so if you want a turret system, this is your turret system. If only you're running turrets, this is your turret system, um, and you've got uh, 10 solar panels. If you're just running a small system, so you could have a couple of turrets and a couple of nice to haves in your base, like lights and uh, etc then this is the setup that you want to run. And if you're doing a medium based setup where you would like to have nine turrets um, and then also extra power to run other things off of, this is what you set up right here. And then say you want to expand and you want to add another nine turrets, well you just add another um, wind turbine, five solar panels, set this up, this up, and you're good to go. Um, and speaking of which, now I'm going to show you the best way to actually properly set this up at a base. So not only does it, you know, have to worry about it, you know, uh, showing up on a wall like this and people being able to see it, find it easy, uh, but you'll actually be able to hide it. Um, so there's a good chance that people will have no idea that you even have power, uh, let alone where it is. So, Okay, so now it's time to set everything up. So, again, we're going to be taking this system right here, um, and we're going to be, well, minus all that stuff, but we're going to be taking this system right here, which I believe, again, to be the best system, um, and we're actually going to set all of that up in here, and we're going to make it so that we can hide everything as well. Okay, so in order to wire that system uh, into this, this is how you have to have everything set up, or what I found to be the best way to have everything configured to be set up um, in order to hide your system um, and still have access to everything that you need to. 
Um, so let's get this all wired up and uh, we'll show you how this works. So let's start with this first branch here. Um, so this first branch is going to do two things. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to be kicked out from the left here. And that's going to be set into uh, this electrical branch right here. Uh, and then the right side of it is going to go into our secondary systems battery. And we're going to just run the wire along the floor and then right up into the battery. So that's how that gets set up. And we're going to configure this first branch to be 120 since we're already here. So now we've got 120 being kicked out the left side when we're producing enough power. Um, and then the rest of that is going to be sent out into the second battery to charge the battery. So we're all set there. Now, uh, this second one is going to be also split into two different directions. So the first one here, uh, we're going to take um, this right side, which will be our green line. And we're going to run this green side into our A input of our OR switch and then from the right side we're going to go into the next electrical branch um, and this one is going to be configured to be 99 because we're working off of a large battery so as you can see now we have our 99 power being sent through uh, when we have enough power <coughs> um, and that's again. This is a, that's the thing with the so, uh, with the uh, the wind turbines is sometimes they can produce them less than 100 power needed. So if you really want to be fully secure for this system, you will add two wind turbines and your five solar panels. Uh, just saying, uh, but you get enough charge throughout the day where um, this system is still uh, fully functional and operational. But if you really want to truly make these back up, you'll add an extra wind turbine. Um, from the left side of this branch here, we're going to go out uh, into the block pass-through of our uh, blocker, and now we're going to hook up this battery. Uh, so let's use our orange line here. So our orange line. run into our battery and then our blue line coming from the battery will run into the bottom side of our blocker like so and then the rest of the power coming from here going to be sent down to the B side of our OR switch. So there we go. So now our infinite power system is working um, for our turrets. But um, we need to now um, supply power to our turrets. So we're going to go from our OR switch back to red to power our turret line. And then from our turret line, we're going to go back down to the floor. We're going to come out here. Now, if you've left this wall off, um, what you can do is you can um, run the power line up through here. Because now we do have to go to the upper floor. So you can run the power line through the wall. And then down to the ground. And then into your system. And then from the system, we need, now need to hook up each one of our um, three splitters here. So we'll do green on that one, we'll do blue on this one. If you need to run the wire across, you're going to run it along the floor, not the ceiling. So now all of our um, 
turret splitters are all set up. Um, so all we have to do is connect our, our turrets into these spots um, and we're good to go. But now we need to finish our, sec our battery here um, to finish up our secondary systems. So we're going to come from our power out. Along the floor. Then along the wall. And then again we're going to go across the floor into this first electrical uh, branch right here which is our electrical tree and this is our basically our master switch our on off master switch um, so we're now going to connect our master switch into our first um, branch of our electrical tree and then we're going to take the right side of that into the third branch of our electrical tree and then we're going to take the right side of that and go into the fourth branch of our electrical tree. So now, um, like I explained to you before, um, if this is set to two, none of your secondary systems are running and your battery is purely on charge um, throughout the day. So you want to turn this system off when you're not on. Uh, and then when you are on, you can configure this to 200 and it'll send power out to all of your other uh, uh, your your branches here on your tree and then each one of these just gets configured to whatever you need them to be so now everything is all set up so now that all of your power is all set up every all of your lines are run um, now you can go and do a few things so, so now those wires aren't sticking up it doesn't look quite as nice but it doesn't matter <coughs> So before you upgrade those walls, make sure you test it. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to line up our box with the lines on the floor. We're going to far wall first, bring it in slightly, and then against the wall. Now in order to do uh, this next box placement uh, correct, what I recommend is you put in a small box. And you want to line this up on the floor again making sure it's nice and square and then you want to have it about halfway down um, this uh, large box right here about the halfway point and then push it up against as tight as you can against that box and then you'll notice that you have more than enough room in order to put uh, down another box so now your whole entire power system is well and truly hidden. You don't even know that it's there. And then once your turrets are hooked up and your secondary systems are hooked up, you can do the same thing up here. So you line up the box with the floor, making it square, far wall, back wall, throwing your small box, about halfway down, lining it up with the floor, And then you can add your large box in here. So now you have an entire syst uh, power system hidden in a loot room. No one will ever know that it's there. Um, you can sort of see that one little one sticking up right there. So we're going to take this box um, and we're actually going to push it closer to the back. Now everything is completely hidden. So power system, what power system? Is you should be able to just uh, reach in there. Yep, see? So if these boxes are pushed tight against that wall, you can just reach uh, your electrical branch so you can configure turning your turrets on and off, meaning you only have to ever move a small box. Uh, and then when you're done, you just put your small box back. Um, and then the same thing goes up here. Whenever you need to adjust any of these things, you just pick this up. And uh, again, if these boxes were positioned correctly, um, you can just reach back and configure these to be whatever you need. Um, yeah, so that is the best power system um, set up and hidden in the best way for your base.